I mean, it was only a matter of time. No creator is safe from my psychoanalysis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. You know that saying you should just stop while you're ahead? Sometimes you should just stop even when you're not ahead. Deaf Noodle. <laughs> There you go. Deaf Noodles is a tea slash drama content creator who has amassed a huge following between the years of 2020 and 2022. Once a creator who had a comedic take on the happenings of social media, he is now the subject of many other commentators' discussions. From the misreporting of allegations to the eventual loss of his Twitter, and now a defamation lawsuit between himself and YouTube's most annoying content creator. Keemstar. Deaf Noodles gained the reputation of defamation noodles based on the sheer amount of stories he would get incorrect on Twitter. Now granted, he would eventually walk back or correct any misinformation or allegations or voices he gave a platform to. But many online argued that the damage was already done. It seems that in the quest to create daily content, his focus was on being the first person to report on something rather than just taking the time to watch things unfold and give his commentary. It seemed as if Deaf Noodles was simply at a juxtaposition between being a commentator, a tea channel, and a news source. I, as well as many other people, simply saw the humanitarian in Deaf Noodles. In his attempt to get these stories stories out there to the people so that we could take a proactive approach to some of these very serious allegations. But now, it seems as if it was all about generating the attention from mainstream media and encapsulating the fame and celebrity it is that he wanted for so many years prior to his rise as one of the biggest commentators on the platform. But Dennis hasn't always been like this, has he? Well, I think that this just could be another cautionary tale of somebody showing us who they are and us refusing to listen. Something that I am beginning to learn more and more every day. So let's take a look at the past and present of Deaf Noodles and how his fall from grace is possibly one of the most disappointing ones we've seen yet that we should have seen coming. <laughs> Deaf Noodle's real name, Dennis Fiatosa, was born on March 10th, 1995. I don't know why I thought dude was older than me, but I guess the black don't crack. He hails from New Jersey, but he currently resides in Los Angeles. Dennis is a self-professed actor, director and comedian. Despite, and this is just me speaking objectively here, and it may not be echoed by everyone, him not really being funny at all. <laughs> How'd you win your career? Just a little. You're supposed to hold me down. Yeah. That was painful. He was born in Brazil, but he grew up in Brooklyn and developed a keen interest in movies and the filmmaking business due to his father's very prominent role as a Warner Brothers executive. He created his first video at nine years old for a book report on Roald Dahl's BFG. He then began working as a voice actor and was involved in his schools and college theater and production groups. He went on to study progressive film theory at UCLA and received improv training from Del Close at the Improv Olympic. Del Close is an American actor, writer, and teacher who has coached many of the best known comedians and comedic actors of the late 20th century, as well as the owner of the Improv Olympic. Some of his most notable students have been people such as Dan Aykroyd, James and John Belushi, Tina Fey, Bill Murray, Mike Myers, and Vince Vaughn, just to name a few. Ah, you can't win them all, Del Close. Despite working the stand-up and improv circuits of New York City, such as the Upright Citizens Brigade and the Broadway Comedy Club, his most consistent form of earnings at that point was as a hot dog salesman in New York. This was obviously before he found viral fame. Now, the reason I'm discussing Deaf Noodle's previous comedic past is honestly just to save you from hearing it from his own mouth a billion times, as he likes to make out that he's an established comedian. To that, he is not. I have a background in comedy. I, I trained literally for years as an improviser in New York and in Los Angeles where I live. 
Uh, I've performed in basically every major theater and venue, a comedy venue in New York and in LA. Every stand-up place, every you know place that you can think of and you can find on Google. I just spent two fucking hours with like six different comedians and we were just shooting the shit about comedy the whole time okay. and I fucking love talking about comedy. We can do that all fucking day. He likes to make out that his comedic videos are essentially a parody of the drama and T channels and the outrage culture it is that they create. He claims that his brand of celebrity news is a mix between The Soup and The Colbert Report. Stating on Vulture, they are the most banal and irrelevant stories that anyone could be talking about you read the comments and people are just talking stuff like so and so had a cup of coffee today and going how why would they ever do that so i'm making fun of these non-stories that are presented and framed in this way that ends up generating all this outrage at the end of the day it's a commentary on the independent social media sphere that fuels so much of this outrage and backlash in the beginning, when Deaf Noodles would tell his stories, he would be in the titty streamer's favorite cat headphones whilst being in a green screened Minecraft house. And at that point, you could definitely see that that was the intent of his content. For the most part, Deaf Noodles rose to fame pretty quickly throughout the lockdowns of 2020, emerging as one of the bigger commentary and news channels on YouTube, to where he now boasts an impressive 530 YouTube subscribers to his daily news show. But it wasn't always that way. Deaf Noodles was once a meme reaction channel that wasn't viewed as a valid content creator by some of the bigger commentators on the platform at that time. Commentators such as Kavos. <laughs> Kavos is a commentator on YouTube with a following of over 1 million subscribers, rising from his coverage of the Logan Paul S Word Forest scandal of 2017. To bring you up to speed, approximately three years ago, Kavos used to live stream a show called Make or Break. And the premise of this show is that people would donate and have their content brutally reviewed by Kavos as Kavos at the time had generated his popularity by being one of the most brutally honest commentators on the platform. Dennis submitted his content for review and Kavos reviewed it, and he didn't like the content. Whose channel at the time of me reviewing it was a Reddit slash Facebook compilation reaction channel. Just took other people's memes and talked over them. Effortless content, so needless to say, I ripped the shit out of it. Soy boy sniper wolf. Area 51 raid me. Uh-oh, where are they? Oh, wait a minute, <sighs> fuck off. This guy literally just reads out memes. He just reads them out. I don't need some douchebag to tell me how to interpret my meme. Don't tell me how to interpret my meme. Don't assume it, all right? I will interpret my meme how I see fit. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Hope you're having a good day. <laughs> Kill me. See, at the time, Dennis had generated 170,000 of his now 530,000 YouTube followers through creating reaction meme content. Videos similar to Nalopia, Sniper Wolf and Azzyland. Now, not many channels can actually generate a following through creating this form of content. And those who try, well, their views are sporadic and they generate a following purely off the occasional viral video. In a situation where the viral video kind of overshadows the content creator themselves. And that's essentially what Cavo saw. And he wasn't shy of telling Deaf Noodles how he felt about his style of content. I mean, that's what he signed up for, right? Now, Deaf Noodles seemed to take everything I said extremely personal. Well, for some bizarre reason, Dennis thought that his content would be viewed as different. I think possibly he felt that he would get a boost in subscribers from having a shout out from a very prominent content creator. But instead, he got humiliated. I don't need some douchebag to tell me how to interpret my meme. You know, that's totally fine. I totally get it. Uh, outside of the fact that I'm a douchebag, I don't find myself to be a douchebag. I don't know what in my video caused you to think that I'm a douchebag. Uh, but I totally understand that. And that's totally your prerogative. And that's why you don't have to click on that video. That's why, 
And nobody, in fact, has to click on that video. The people who click on it are the people who are seeking that out. And that's what I offer. I offer, you know, a fun way to talk about an event that's happening. For some reason, my words held so much weight to this guy. Like, why do you not like me? That's the first thing. That kind of hurt my feelings. I'm going to be completely honest. Like, what have I done to make you not like me? Like, I didn't like say something to offend you as far as I know. Maybe I'm too politically correct. Maybe that offends you. I don't know. I, I want to understand why you don't like me. Like what specifically about me made you dislike me so much that you're like just going in and insulting me to this point. And we've never met by the way. I, I never like went into like looking into who you were before this. So. so Deaf Noodles, not being one to shy away from criticism, decided to review Kavos's review of his content for his audience and he was visibly upset i don't know i don't know what i did to just <laughs> deserve this but i actually find it kind of funny i don't know maybe it's my sense of humor but <laughs> i think it's funny this has to become a meme <laughs> I think it's funny. You can literally see the pain in his eyes as he's saying that. <laughs> I think it's funny. He finds absolutely no part of this funny. He then tells his audience after nitpicking every criticism for 20 minutes that these words that I'm saying don't mean anything to him. Thankfully, I'm at a point in my life where I have self-confidence and I'm not going to place my entire self-worth on someone else's opinion of me. If this was maybe like 10 years ago, maybe... I would take your opinion so seriously and like even maybe quit YouTube. After the negative response from his audience, Duff Noodles created a video titled, Kavos made me want to quit YouTube, where he cites that he's having a mental crisis. Hey guys, uh, today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm just gonna have a conversation with you guys because especially after yesterday's video, I got a lot of uh, feedback. A lot of you guys thought I wasn't being my regular self, I wasn't being like super excited and just animated about how I was reacting. I'm just going to be completely honest with you guys. I've just been kind of sad over the past few days, ever since that whole thing with Kavos, where he basically tore my channel apart. Everything he said has kind of been cycling in my head. I am kind of going through a small personal crisis, if that's what you can call it. So, uh, basically, that's where I'm at right now, and it doesn't feel that good, and every time I upload a video, I feel like you guys don't like it, and I just feel really, really bad right now. But Deaf Noodles did eventually take up Kavos' advice and switched up his content entirely. He made it his mission to become the next big commentator. And I guess he kind of succeeded. So let's talk about the Minecraft era. Dennis created a formula for his content. He created an over-dramatized persona that originated from his reaction meme content. But instead of just watching and reacting, he would watch and react to content with the viewer whilst giving his commentary. Each topic segment was two minute or less reminiscent of Phil DeFranco's style, but with a comedic, non-serious take on the topics discussed, regardless of how depraved the actions of the individuals involved in the story. That's because in 2020, when the pandemic hit, people had began to get tired of seeing the same shitty creators doing shitty things. But to dwell on the awfulness of the situation did not take the viewers out of the awfulness that was the pandemic that was happening in their real lives. When prior to the pandemic, people would watch these commentary videos on these shitty influencers to remind them how not so shitty their lives was. It's like the world did an entire 180. He grew and fast. And one of his biggest platforms was Twitter, where he could get ahead of the stories it is that he was going to be covering in his video whilst in tandem cross-pollinating his Twitter audience with his YouTube audience. Everybody had Deaf Noodles on notification at one point, 
just to keep up to date with celebrity news, drama, as well as influencer news and drama, even mainstream media had him on notification. This would essentially be the beginning of Deaf Noodles' downfall, as he would create many enemies by misreporting the news he wanted to stay on top of. One of the biggest critiques it is that he would face would be that he would either report on or make serious allegations. And when people would call him out for either how tactless it was that Dennis handled the story or how objectively false the information was, they would simply just get blocked. This kind of hypersensorship would make many people angry and nobody was more angry than the commentary bros. Content creators such as Nicholas Diorio, John Swan, Kavos, and Keemstar would all make videos, or in Keemstar's case, tweets commentating on how deaf noodles would constantly get things wrong and coined the term defamation noodles. However, sometimes deaf noodles' response would be an inflammatory insinuation that the people who disagreed with him or critiqued him opposed his political beliefs. Now, at the time, we have to remember that Deaf Noodles' audience was derivative from the drama and tea channels it was that he tried to parody. Deaf Noodles' audience was not the same people who were supporting the commentary bros' critiques. There was already a very strong divide between these two communities. Although all commentators, their views on socio-political issues were distinctly different. And for a long time, many people, even including myself, were duped by Deaf Noodle's perception of this negative critique. And many of us saw it as an unreasonable attack against the new emerging star of commentary. And nobody wanted this man to go away more than Keemstar. And in the T-sphere, they hated Keemstar, giving more validity to Deaf Noodle's reasoning, when the reality is, we would find out that they were probably right. <laughs> However, Keemstar would make an edgy joke that would eventually land itself in a lawsuit. So let's talk about the absolute non-stop fight between Keemstar and Deaf Noodles. <laughs> So Keemstar made an edgy satirical joke about Deaf Noodles misreporting the James Charles allegations. Many will remember that in 2020 and 2021, James Charles had numerous allegations made against him for being inappropriate with straight men as well as minors. Some of these allegations, however, were provably false. The James Charles situation messaging I thought it is fake and it was my stupid, stupid, irresponsible idea to even do that. Deaf Noodles reported on these allegations as they came out at the time, keeping on top of everything James Charles. The problem was with allegations this serious in nature, there has to be a level of decorum that they are dealt with. And on Twitter, Deaf Noodles missed the mark. In his haste to be the first with the news, Deaf Noodles reported on at least two James Charles allegations that were objectively false. The problem with that was that there was actually some serious allegations that many felt may have had some form of validity to them. And after James Charles' own admission of guilt in video format... First and foremost, I need to say sorry. Um, I owe a massive apology to anybody that I've hurt or anybody that I've made uncomfortable with my actions. I'm desperate. Many felt that all of the badly and misreported news surrounding the James Charles allegations gave James the leverage to condemn most, if not all, of the allegations as false. It was basically one drama channel on Twitter that started a thread and started compiling a list of anybody that said literally anything about me on social media. And after what felt like weeks of somebody new coming forward every single day, it eventually became the 20 victims of James Charles. I am not gonna go through this list one by one because I know that nobody wants to sit here for an hour listening to me talk about this, but I do feel as though I have to say something because I am just not comfortable with this video or really any video moving forward allowing anybody, let alone my followers, to think that there are any victims of James Charles, let alone 20 victims of James Charles, because that is completely, unequivocally not 
true. Now, when I say that literally anything and everything was being added to this list, I really do mean anything and everything. There were a few different influencers from TikTok that slid into my DMs or I slid into their DMs and had a five minute conversation with them until asking their age or sexuality and then completely stopped responding. There were guys that I matched with on Tinder last year and they had their ages set to 18 or 19. So I talked to them and flirted with them for a while because that's the whole point of an adult dating app until I realized that they were lying. So I blocked them and nothing further happened. Uh, one of my own friends is on that list simply because we filmed a TikTok together when he was 18 and the drama channel that was posting this just decided that I groomed him. Um, you know, there's a guy from my high school on that list because he made a video about me and as annoying as it was, at least in his video, he fully said that it was completely consensual, that we were both grown adults and that he was only posting it for clout. I can at least appreciate the honesty, but the problem is when it was reported on Twitter, it was a fan comes forward about James Charles forcing him to do blah, 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 blah which is just so far from what was even said by the person that actually made the video in the first place. But the worst part about all of this is that on top of all of those situations, there were countless videos posted that were completely fake. I'm not talking about somebody unsent a message or somebody took something out of context. I'm talking about conversations that fully never happened that were edited from beginning to end. Essentially taking the voices away from real potential victims. So Keemstar took to Twitter to parody Deaf Noodles' style and format of tweeting about news to make a false allegation that Deaf Noodles was a predator with a fake cited source. This would ensue the biggest fight in commentary that would last over a year. I mean, move over Keemstar and Ethan Klein. Like this was, this took over the internet. Constantly going back and forth, eventually Deaf Noodles would be banned from Twitter for the entire year. Not knowing the cause of his ban, Deaf Noodles alluded to it being Keemstar reporting him to Twitter staff. In 2022, Deaf Noodles would pursue a libel litigation against Keemstar in a, as far as we're still aware, pending lawsuit for calling him a predator. But more recently, the tables would turn as Deaf Noodles would do the one thing it is that he is pursuing legalities against making a false allegation of predatory behavior against another influencer in a edgy, satirical joke. So let's talk Papa Gut. So before I get into what Dennis has done, we need to talk about how Dennis has recently switched up his content. 11 months ago, Deaf Noodles finally retired the Minecraft character. It is that he had been playing throughout the pandemic, promising to switch up his commentary and to show the real him. However, this did not stop the flow of negative critique following him from his Twitter antics. His YouTube audience were mostly unaware of how many provably false stories it was that Deaf Noodles had misreported. So many smaller commentators began to make more and more videos critiquing Deaf Noodles. One of those commentators was Papa Gut. Five months ago, Papa Gut would invite Deaf Noodles to sit down and talk about their opposing opinions as well as Deaf Noodles' Twitter antics in a debate. This would end up being one of the worst things it is that Deaf Noodles would do for his entire career. As the character it was that we saw when he had his channel critiqued by Kavos, would rear his ugly head for a second time. Papa Gut brought some very valid criticisms along with explanations as to why Dennis's behavior was not cute. And I think that Dennis took this debate as Papa Gut is a generally reasonable guy who would handle the discussion a lot kinder than the commentary bros who tried to debate him prior. Papa Gut having far less subscribers than him seemed like a safe bet in terms of positive PR. That's just my conspiracy. However, Papa Gut did not hold back. He gave it to Dennis straight whilst remaining calm, reasonable, and more compassionate and forgiving than most people would be in that situation. But you're being very serious. And then when you get called on it, you're like, you're kind of just walking back like, was well, it just a joke? I don't really, but like, where, how is it? I just don't, I, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying, it just doesn't come off as a joke. I mean, so, I, I'm, that's I'm, just- So the thing is, here's the thing. A lot of people like to say humor is subjective, right? Maybe the joke's sure. not written for you. That's what it is. Who's, well, so what, who's the joke for people? I mean, who don't clearly, like I have six hundred thousand subscribers, so there's a joke for someone. There. That's good. Yeah. So, well, and I, I'm not okay. saying that to flex. I'm saying clearly, there are people who identify with the jokes. 
So, there are people who identify with your content. Nah, nah. And they probably, they probably no, identify no. with like the, the no, hateful no, speech that you, you promote. So productive about this shit and you're like, try, you're, you want to die on this hill. You want to discredit me as a comedian. What are you talking about? So they can lay, I, no, I, no, 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 I'm not trying to discredit you as a comedian. I'm really, I'm really no, not no, trying no, to do no. that. Be honest right now. This is exactly what you're doing. You're trying to discredit me as a comedian. Whenever we get into points in the conversation and then I will bring something up and then you, no offense, you kind of like ramble around my point until we lost like what the original thing we were talking about was. So wait, so and we explain, get so explain what I rambled about. What was a rambling? I believe we were, we were talking, okay, so, because we really got off topic. We were originally talking about you um, making, like, how you're, what you're saying is, like, a joke. And then I came in and so like, why is it different from Kill It? And then you, we get into this whole conversation about how, like, you know, the satire is for you, the way your audience interprets it is up to them. The, and then I talked the to you about how do you look, think that... Look, let me explain something. Well, no, but see how you're, you're doing you're not, it again. No, I'm just trying to get... like, I understand you want to drill down on my comedy, and we can do that all it's, fucking day. No, but like we I'm trying to like I, this is a really no, but this is such an important topic too. Like I just, spent, I just spent two fucking hours with like six different comedians, and we were just shooting the shit about comedy the whole time. Okay. And I fucking love talking about comedy. We can do that all fucking day. At, at the end of the day, look, it's a. Uh, I, I do my best. I, like I said, I, I, I know, I know, but like we were talking, like we we're just trying to make a point. And I was, I asked, I'm just you extremely, are, at this point, I'm just extremely annoyed that this is like, this I has to be the too, most man. low IQ, dumb idiot conversation I've ever had in my entire life. I we keep circling around. Agree. Now, now I'm actually, I'm actually insulting this conversation. I'm a part of it. So I'm insulting myself. So don't feel insulted. Okay. okay I'm an okay. idiot. So, I'm a fucking idiot. Can you, can you just, can you just tell me how I shifted the goalpost though before? Right, you, you started this, you started this, this whole thing. You got it. Okay. Just say it. You got offended that I called you an incel. I changed it. I, okay? did, I didn't. At the end of the day, you got, you got offended. You got offended that I called you an incel. And that's totally fine. Well, but I did That is totally fine. That offended you. It's, totally a really, it's a really weird game it. that you're playing right now where you're that trying is, to tell that me that totally I'm offended something to try to discredit my perspective the the day, than to engage with what I'm saying. At the end of the day, you, you got offended by that. And you can spew you're how you Talk about mouth. how you being intentionally hateful is just a joke. But the second that a 17-year-old black kid does it, all no, of a sudden it's not a no, joke. No, I've been and against like, it's harassment. Fucking Look, listen, it's insane. I don't even listen. think that you have the mental capacity to understand how fucking unintelligent you are here. It's mind-blowing. Basically, Daft Noodles made an absolute fool of himself for the world to see and many of his audience began to see the real him. Deaf Noodles would eventually respond to his audience's revulsion to his behavior, because again, as I said prior, his audience on YouTube weren't necessarily privy to his behavior and his antics on Twitter as well as Instagram. And now they saw the person that we had been seeing for a long time. He released a video called, Deaf Noodles is canceled. Bracket, not clickbait. Emotional. Where we apologize to Papa Gut and his audience for basically acting like a douche. But that resentment it is that he holds for yet another public humiliation of his own doing would continue to take a hold of him as he would take little sneaky and sly digs at Papa Gut at every opportunity. Even more recently on his return to Twitter, after he found out that he got banned for completely different reasonings beyond his original Keemstar allegations, yeah, it turns out that he got banned for a completely different reason and it had nothing to do with Keemstar at all. Uh, and it says, we have determined that your account violated the Twitter rules specifically for violating our child sexual exploitation policy. About a year ago, uh, there was a scandal with Millie Bobby Brown she was, uh, people found out that she was dating this guy who was like in his mid twenties when she was like four, 15 or 16. Right. And he's like in his 20 something. So in this live stream, he's saying like stuff like, Oh, she gave great head for a minor and all this shit, like really wow. pedophilic shit. Um, so I shared the live stream. There's nothing like it doesn't show anything involving a minor. It's just this guy, Millie's ex on the pool saying these things. So that's why. However, upon his most valiant return back to Twitter, as his account recently got reinstated, Deaf Noodles alluded to the notion that he made Papa Gut famous. Despite the fact that Papa Gut had over a million followers on TikTok prior to his own suspension. And now recently, I guess he's making false predator allegations. So earlier today, Deaf Noodles posted the following. MF got famous on TikTok for joking about effing 14 year old girls, but then gets offended when someone jokes about him. But you know, he was right. I shouldn't have said that. I should have instead said he makes himself so small in his videos to hide the fact he looks like a pedophile. At FBI Los Angeles, put this mf -er on a watch list. He looks mad suspicious. This was in relation to a conversation had by viewers on Twitter who brought up a time when Papa Gut made an extremely insensitive edgy joke that he condemns at every opportunity that it's brought up. Now, just to make you guys understand how important context is, let me give you the context of this joke. Now, prior to his suspension or ban from TikTok, 
Papaka had made a joke about the Lopez brothers. Now, if you don't know who the Lopez brothers are, they found themselves in a bunch of controversy when one of the Lopez brothers, or twins, or whatever you want to call them, had been accused of being highly inappropriate with a 14-year-old. Papaga made the joke, if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. Thank you for the advice Andreas Lopez. Now, this particular joke was made because of the presence of these allegations. However, that joke misfired tremendously and ended up actually being a dunk on SA survivors. Now, again, to give more context to who Papaga is, if you don't know, He's a YouTuber and content creator and previous TikToker, I think he's back on TikTok with a new account now, who has basically made it his personal mission to advocate for SA survivors, to educate young men on consent and what is deemed as assault, as well as holding a space and giving a platform for victims to speak. He does this style of content to the detriment of views, to the detriment of sponsorships, to the detriment of growth because it's truly his passion. He's passionate about ending the cycle of abuse or attempting to end the cycle of abuse. And by the way, Deaf Noodles, I'm going completely off script here now. And by the way, Deaf Noodles, there is no look for a file or predator of any nature. They look like everyday people. They look like anybody on the street, anybody could be a predator. There's not a look and we should release the stigma of that kind of shit. It's bullshit. But regardless of all of this, whatever it is that you think of Papa Gut and this horrendous joke, I'm not here to change anybody's mind and I sure as hell don't stand by the joke. It is clear that he is not a predator until real allegations come forward. Content creators such as Adam McIntyre even cited the synergy between what Dennis is suing Keemstar over versus what Papa Gut has experienced. Essentially, he became the one person it is that he despised the most. He became his arch nemesis, Keemstar. And Papa Gut ended up having an extremely emotional response. You don't have to like it, Dennis. You don't have to like me. But every single day, I put my credibility on the line to say something that I mean, to have the right conversation with these people, with the young men in my fucking audience. That's what I do. I'm a real fucking man, Dennis, and I'm trying my best to educate these kids. But what are you doing? What are you putting on the line, Dennis? Other than your fucking credibility every single day. Because you look like a fucking moron. And your attempt to try to deplatform me after a really bad fucking joke that I never should have made with good intentions after a year of doing my best to operate in the best capacity to educate people, but also make sure that I don't come off in a way that puts people off because I want people to listen to the message. And this is what it boils down to. You're stupid ass doing this shit, trying to attack my credibility as a person, as a content creator, as somebody who tries to educate young men. I think about every single survivor who's reached out to me and who said, this really fucked me up, Dennis. That's what I think about. And I hear these women and they tell me, they tell me, you know, he wasn't a bad guy and he didn't even realize what he was doing. They asked me questions. They asked me, do you think that I was right? After telling me a horrific situation, that's what they tell me, Dennis. That's what I think about every single time that I've engaged in, in talking about some kind of a sexual assault or I listen to somebody tell me about their sexual assault or I deep, try to deplatform a content creator about these horrible fucking things that they do. Do you know what I do, Dennis? Do you know what I've been doing for the past two years every time I deal with this, Dennis? I chain smoke and I eat like garbage. And it's not an excuse to do it. But like I was a little healthier before this. I don't like to tell people this because who the f*** am I? These people are telling me their real stories and I'm complaining about getting stressed from hearing them or trying to de-platform people. It's not even close to the amount of stress that they deal with. But that's how, that's the impact it has on me. And it, it doesn't even compare. It doesn't even compare. But here we are, Dennis. This is what we get to do. We get to sit here. And now I get to... I, I just put in a situation where I feel like I just have to bear my entire fucking soul. And you're going to listen to this and you're going to laugh. And you're going to think it's funny. But you want to know what, Dennis? It's not funny. It's just not funny.
Papa Gut has made a visible 180 in terms of the kind of content it is that he produces. Leaving behind the old edgelord version of himself to instead using his platform to educate people on essay and R word culture. The joke it is that Deaf Noodles made literally seems as if it came out of left field because it was not based on anything at all. Papa Gut has never made allegations of Deaf Noodles in this manner nor is Deaf Noodles attempting to parody allegations that Papa Gut has made. Unlike how Keemstar's edgy satirical joke about Deaf Noodles being a potential predator paralleled some of Deaf Noodles' own tweets in their style and their format. What Deaf Noodles did today was a baseless accusation for the sake of a baseless accusation to one-up the guy who humiliated him five months prior. And again, I'm not here to endorse anybody's jokes. Not Keemstar's, not Deaf Noodles, and not even Papa Guts. They're all just awful, terrible jokes. But we have to be fair and state that the only person not making false predator allegations is Papa Gut. So, why should anyone care? Well, because Dennis's entire life he has been hiding, and it's about time he showed himself. He's been hiding his personality behind the character he created. He's been hiding his tactless commentary behind satire and comedy. He's been hiding his sensitivity behind lawsuits, and he even hid his Twitter ban slash suspension behind false allegations. And again, he's hiding an edgy predator joke at another creator's expense behind whataboutisms of mainstream media's mishandling and misreporting of news. Instead of just holding his hands up and saying, I fucked up, he creates a diversion so that nobody ever sees the true him. The true Dennis is a man that didn't do so well in comedy despite his family's connections and couldn't create a name for himself in mainstream media. So he took to the internet to find the next viral hit. And once he found a community that accepted him with open arms, he shut on him the moment it is that he got close to the top and refused to listen to the viewers and the people who helped him get there. But what he lost was respect. And we all know too well here on social media that once you lose the respect of the audience, it is incredibly hard to get that back. Ain't that right, John Swan? I think this is what the kids call based. Anyway, I don't think that Deaf Noodles is a terrible person. I believe that anybody can reform their character. I mean, shit, if Papa Gut can do it, anyone can. He just needs to climb down from that high horse because at the end of the day, everybody pisses clear or yellow if you're dehydrated. I don't think he needs to make some kind of grandiose apology, but maybe remember what it felt like when people began to take notice and how good it felt and to cherish the kudos it was that he got in the beginning. Because at the end of the day, everyone's a work in progress. We're all human, but Dennis, he's a menace. Anyway, that is about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I just saw what was happening on social media and honestly, the emotional response from Papa Gut really touched me actually, because it's very rare that you see somebody on social media actually truly give a fuck about the things that they're doing. Because so many people are just, you know, chasing views, clout, money, this, that, that people forget, you know, what it's all about. I think that's like one of the reasons why you know, like when people on social media will like go out of their way to try and dunk me and stuff and say, oh, your views aren't what they once were. Girl, do you know what? Like, I always have to remind myself and I, I encourage Dennis to remind himself, like, do you even know what 10,000 people would look like in one room? Like, that's like Wembley 
fucking arena and that many people decide to click on your video every single day should be a blessing for just knowing that people give a shit to hear you even talk like we're blessed we are beyond blessed you know so positive light and energies to everyone um also i just wanted to say a massive thank you to my patreons i really appreciate you as well as the youtube family thank you guys so much as well as the twitch fam you guys have been rocking with me and honestly i've been hella emotional recently so i really really appreciate your support honestly i would be fuck all without y'all and with that being said i hope you guys have an amazing day or evening whatever the hell it is that you're doing and until next time should I say something really nice? Okay, I got it. A fertile male human ejaculates between two to five millimeters of uh, spunk. So that is about as average as a teaspoon. And in each milliliter, there are normally about 100 million sperm. So that means that you are one in between 200 million and 500 million. So cherish every day, because guess what? A different sperm could have got to that egg and you wouldn't have been here today. So live every friggin' day like it's your last. God, I'm full of positivity and weird strange facts from the internet. <laughs> Until next time, you beautiful, amazing, badass bitches. It's been Paige. Bye! <laughs>